It was the day of the annual Marin Highland Games. As usual, the famous paddle steamer Red Gauntlet had brought hundreds of excited visitors, athletes, and pipers over from the mainland to enjoy the fun. As the last pipe band marched ashore, Captain Bobo turned to the first officer. Well, Sheila, another job well done. Will not be needed again until this evening. Why don't we sail up Loch Stern? It's beautiful up there. Half an hour later, Sheila pointed out an old pier up ahead. That's Ravenhead Pier," said Captain Bobo. "It's not been used in twenty years." Look," exclaimed Sheila, looking through her binoculars. "Is that someone waving?" Sheila handed him the binoculars. "It's old Jean." It's not like her to wave like that. There must be something wrong. I'm taking her into the pier. Jean was very pleased they'd stopped. Oh, Captain," said Jean, clearly upset. "There's a t- 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 tiger out there in the woods." But Jean replied, "Captain Bobo, that's impossible." There are no wild tigers in Scotland. Well, so you say, but I've glimpsed one in the bushes up there," said Jean, pointing up the hill, "and seen the tracks." Jean led everyone up the hill. Halfway up, she stopped and pointed down to the ground. Sure enough. There were paw prints in the mud. Sheila tried to follow the trail. Look, they lead right up into the forest. What did I tell you? Said Jean. It's not safe here. And then she added firmly, "So, Bobo, I'm relying on you to catch it." Once back on board Red Gauntlet, Captain Bobo talked to Chief Engineer Puffy Watt. Jean's right. We need to help her," he said. "We'll need to build some sort of trap." "Well," replied Puffy after a moment, "I suppose we might be able to do something with the old railings on the pier and some rope." Soon Puffy and Boing Boing were in the workshop laboring away. There was lots of clanging and banging, a few sparks and flashes. And at one point, an enormous great cloud of smoke. Finally, they were happy. Right, let's get you up on deck and show the captain. It was like a giant version of a parrot's cage hanging from a hook. Sheila asked what sort of bait might attract a tiger. Bleep suggested one of Cook's finest cheese sandwiches. They're so tasty. Puffy began his demonstration. So we place the sandwich here, and pointed to a large X marked in the middle of the contraption. Now, imagine Billy here as a tiger. Puffy continued, gently pushing Billy towards the cage. Now, Billy, move towards the sandwich. Yes, as though you were a hungry tiger on the lookout for a. Tasty treat, and when Billy, I mean the tiger, packs up the sandwich, it releases this little spring under here, and that causes this rope there to be released, and then, wham! The cage drops down, and we catch ourselves a tiger. Simple. Hmm. Thought Captain Bobo. Good work, Puffy, but. Are you sure tigers actually like cheese? They dragged the trap up the hill. No, Puffy announced proudly, settling the cheese sandwich carefully in its place. All we need to do is wait. Shouldn't we hide if we're not to frighten off the tiger? Suggested Sheila. Oh, good thinking. Agreed, the captain. Over there, behind those bushes. 
It's a hot day, and it might be a long wait. Billy, go back to the ship and fetch some lemonade. Captain Bobo was right. It was a hot day, and waiting for tigers can be very tiring. Soon the crew were feeling a bit sleepy. One by one, they nodded off. <coughs> When Billy came back, he found everyone asleep. Looking around, he had an idea. He smiled to himself and quickly headed back to the ship. Returning a few minutes later, Billy sat down next to the sleeping crew. It wasn't long before there was a very loud clank. A tiger! I must be the tiger! Bleep screamed excitedly. The little group rushed out. Sure enough, the trap was sprung. The cage door had fallen, but it was empty. The sandwich had gone, but so had the tiger. Suddenly, Captain Bobo gave out a hearty laugh. Billy! Very funny, he said, looking over at the far side of the clearing. There, sitting on a small rock, was Pinky, Billy's pet mouse, merrily munching his way through the cheese sandwich. Captain Bobo was still chuckling when he ordered the trap to be put back in place. This time I think we might try something more likely to attract a tiger. What about some meat? But the trap reset. The little group scurried back to their hiding places to wait and watch. An hour passed. Suddenly, Sheila whispered, Did you hear that? Somewhere up on the hill, there was a very faint snap. There, said Sheila quietly. Captain Bobo nodded, then said softly, Stand by, everyone. Something was moving, and it was heading right towards the trap. Crash! The crew rushed out excitedly, carrying ropes and nets, ready to confront the tiger. But when they got there, right in the center of the cage, chomping away, was the fattest, fluffiest tabby cat they had ever seen. Well, well, said Captain Bobo, trying not to smile. Would you believe it? With the tabby cat snug in Sheila's arms, Captain Bobo turned to the crew and announced, I think we can tell Jean that she can sleep safely in her bed tonight. We've caught the raven-head tiger. Jean was waiting back at the pier, first aid kit in hand, ready to bandage the wounds of those brave enough to wrestle a fearsome tiger. When she saw Sheila approach, she was astonished. Well, goodness gracious, would you look at that, she said. Here you are, Jean, said Captain Bobo, the raven-head tiger in all its glory. Jean laughed. If it isn't old Jim's wee lost tittles, Jim will be so delighted to have her back. <coughs> Captain Bobo and the crew set sail back to Marin Island, ready to collect the visitors at the end of the Highland Games. Sheila said to the captain, Somehow, I don't think people will believe we've been on a tiger hunt this afternoon. This is a Bell Media production, narrated by John Sessions, supported by the Audio Content Fund.